dig, uh, discs, compact discs, and di digital audio tape, along with the regular audio tape, has dropped the record, regular record business down to only 25% of what it used to be. That new technology is music that usually has to be played loud. And that brings me to socks. Yeah, I know, it's been a long week. What's new? Daring combinations of pastel, argyle, and herringbone seem to be in. Probably in with the women who buy the wild ties for Christmas, birthdays, or good old Father's Day. <laughs> well, can we see your socks, Jack? Daring dark gray. They're boring. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I the the like ankles them. are, too. <laughs> <laughs> I like them that way. Okay. Thanks, Jack. Have a good weekend. You, too. Singer Tony Bennett's in a spot right now that refocuses attention on a disease that slipped into the background with the arrival of AIDS. Tracy has it in your health next. But first, the story of a woman who is furious over Nymo's cleanup of her backyard after our storm. You'll see why. A Gilderland woman is demanding compensation from Niagara Mohawk for the trees in her front yard that the utility workers destroyed yesterday. But Carol Sharon says they will never be able to compensate her for the loss of the beautiful 75-foot pines that had been planted by her husband's parents. Sharon had been told the Nymo crews would trim the trees so they wouldn't interfere with power lines. She says this is no tree trimming and that as power workers, they make lousy lumberjacks. These trees have been here for 35 years or longer. I have pictures of my husband standing here as a baby in front of these trees, and this is, this is a trim job. I feel like I own nothing here. I don't. We should point out that neither Sharon nor her husband was home when Nymo did the work. She says her property's ruined forever. Nymo is supposed to come and survey the damage soon. And if it was difficult to see in that video, and it might have been, uh, the trees had actually been cut off at about a 12-foot level and were just, the branches were out where they Not would have been. Not very aesthetic. There, there weren't any points <laughs> on the top anymore. And it really, uh, we smile, but yeah. it, uh, she was very upset about it. We'll move on to your health now. How can you warm a child? Where can you drink the water? What's being done to, uh, to make parents of seriously ill children comfortable? And guess who's being sued for passing on herpes? Tracy is joins us with all of that. Liz, it's the singer's singer, Tony Bennett. He's being sued by his supposed ex-girlfriend who claims the singer gave her genital herpes during a 1985 affair. She wants $95 million, and now a New York City judge has ordered Bennett to be tested for the disease. Herpes doesn't make too many headlines now that AIDS is the most feared sexually transmitted disease, but millions of Americans carry the virus. The judge hasn't said which test Bennett must take, but you should know there are two kinds. A culture in which a lesion would be swabbed and a lab test will determine if the virus is present. The other test requires blood be drawn and can tell doctors whether the person has been exposed to herpes, although it wouldn't tell, be able to tell them if the carrier ever had any active outbreaks which are necessary to pass on genital herpes. In Washington County, it's now all right to drink the water in the town of Cambridge. Residents there have been boiling their drinking water because the chlorination system broke down and the water was being over chlorinated. To any of us parents, the words childhood cancer cause us to cringe. But right now in Albany, people are doing something to help families burdened by that problem. They're at the Ronald McDonald House in Albany at a fundraiser reception. The money will go towards expanding the house at 139 South Lake Avenue to 137 South Lake Avenue. And that means if you ever need to be close to a child receiving cancer treatment at an Albany hospital, there will be 17 bedrooms ready to put you up. And it seems that a lot of you are finding time to make sure that some local children stay warm this winter. Dry cleaners taking part in WRGB's Coats for Kids campaign tell us you have donated many outgrown but still good jackets for kids who otherwise might not get a new one this year. Dry cleaners have already cleaned many coats and sent them to local distribution centers. By the way, any dry cleaner that was not contacted by the Coats for Kids effort but would like to take part can call Channel 6 during business hours and will tell you how you can help out. And there are two weeks left to donate coats, and adult-sized coats are also needed because they can be worn, of course, by teenagers. So adults can clean out their closets, too. It's a good idea. Do it this weekend. Right. Thanks, Tracy. Well, when we come back, meteorologist John Sesswich will give us his final fall foliage report and then a lesson on how to rake up those leaves. <laughs> oh, God. I'll show you how to rake them. My wife will show me this weekend, I'm sure. I'll be back with the forecast in just a minute. 
You can kind of tell the leaves are getting ready to leave us, if you don't mind my saying so. <laughs> How are they going to be this weekend? Yeah, they're all, over, they're all over the yard, everywhere, all over the Capital District. Well, Liz, it's past peaking through the Capital District, but if you want to go down south, lower Hudson Valley, New York City, Long Island, they're getting close to peak colors. So that's head south this weekend, and you'll see some pretty nice colors also still out in western New York. Weather spotters look like this. Priscilla Berry reports 52 degrees in cloudy skies in Saratoga Springs, otherwise mainly upper 40s to lower 50s through the Capital District. Cool, but not bad for this time of the year. My forecast goes like this for tonight. Shower around maybe early tonight, otherwise partly cloudy skies, not as cold, overnight low in the upper 30s. For tomorrow, as we go into another weekend, looks like a great day on Saturday to rake leaves. Ooh, 60 degrees, a mixture of clouds and sunshine. It gives me shivers just to think about raking leaves. South winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. For tomorrow night, showers likely, especially after midnight, overnight low of 44. Sunset will be at 559. But Sunday, clearing skies in the afternoon. Maybe a shower early, though, Sunday morning. Lots of sunshine, Liz, expected on the early part of next week. So as long as the showers arrive Saturday night, Saturday during the day, and Sunday during the day, it'll look pretty good. And you can rake those leaves. Oh, gosh. <laughs> All right, thanks, John. If you find a lot of leftovers in your, refri your refrigerator, Mr. Food is a great idea for using them up and warming you up. I'm always asked, what do I do with those extra little bits in the vegetable bin? Make them into an Easy Ray vegetable chowder. It's a snap. Just using any brands, all we do is combine in a saucepan a can of chicken broth, two cups of water, a cup of sliced carrots, a half cup of chopped onion, a minced small clove of garlic, and an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. Bring it to a boil, put it on medium heat, cover it, let it cook for 10 minutes. Then we put in two cups of vegetables, green beans, broccoli, cauliflower, whatever, or a combination of them is fine. Then while we're stirring it well, we drizzle in a mixture of two tablespoons of flour and three quarters of a cup of milk. Let it cook about another 10 minutes, and it gets creamy thick and bubbly, like chowder's supposed to be, with choices all the way from start to finish, like putting in more onion if you want, or using a, a powder base for the broth, or, or more vegetables. Not only fresh ones either, but they can be frozen or, or, or left over from dinner from the other night. Already cooked, it all works, makes no difference. I throw in a, a cup and a half of shredded Swiss cheese just before I serve it, and it's even creamier and thicker and, and tangier. And if you'd like the recipe, just send a self-addressed stamped envelope marked vegetable chowder to me, Mr. Food, here at the station, and we'll get it back to you for making what's in the vegetable bin the easiest star of any lunch or dinner. You know, or the Sunday night, what should I make? Perfect. You thought that whole head was too much to buy. Uh -uh. Not when we get an extra, ooh, it's so good. When we come back, we're going to take a last look at the wonderful fall foliage pictures you sent us. But first, we will leapfrog to a circus that has the jump on the competition. <laughs> And now a riveting story from the world of the circus tent. This may truly be the greatest show on earth. There's more to fairs than games and Ferris wheels. At the Alabama State Fair this year, there's a real star. He's green, he's slimy, and he's ugly. Welcome to the Broker College Fantastic Frog Trolleys and Frog Fashion Review. Let's just call it the Frog Folly. There is more than one star in this show, but they all look, if not dress alike, and they're full of hypnotizing froggy feet. Bill Steed, that's Professor Croker, trains these bull frogs, and he says he's full of both. For 20 years, I was in the mind motivation business for people. And so I, I went up to Calaveras County and watched the frog jumping contest one year, and I noticed a lot of the frogs didn't jump very well, and so I thought I'd motivate people. Why not motivate frogs? Motivate them, he does. Some even take the jump and become celebrities. Ben Campbell. Oh, I love it. I collect frogs, and I love this. I was so excited. It's the main reason I came to the fair. It is kind of gross, but it's funny. The audience has a frog on time, but you got to wonder if life at the college is all it's close up to be. One, two, three. After all, wouldn't you rather be sitting on a lily pad? <laughs> this is Marianne Matthews reporting. I just love those little guys. 
We're going to take a look now at the stories that led this news hour. A 16-year-old high school dropout from Greenport was charged today with second-degree murder in a case that authorities first thought was just a traffic accident. 46-year-old Richard Bashford was killed last month when he was hit by a car while walking on Route 9 in the Columbia County town of Stockport. 16-year-old Jeffrey Ham was a passenger in that car. Police say he grabbed the steering wheel in the middle of an argument with his girlfriend, forcing the car to swerve and hit the man. And the operator of a West Sand Lake nursing home told her 10 patients today they'll have to find somewhere else to go. A judge ruled today the nursing home did not meet state, state safety standards and ordered Linda Morgan to shut it down. Her patients have about a week to find new places to go. And we'll find out from Ernie and Tracy now what stories the night team's working on. Well, we've told you already about the region's decision today on the AIDS curriculum. Tonight we're going to hear from the students. Will it change how they deal with sex as young adults? and what's their advice to school districts. And Tracy, you know, no matter w when we graduated, we can wax nostalgic about our high school years. Tonight, a trip down memory lane with area graduates looking back 65 years. That should be good. And we'll walk the line tonight with celebrated country singer Johnny Cash on stage tonight in Schenectady. Please join us for those stories and a lot more at 11 on the Night Team Report. Liz? Well, thank you, Tracy. And if you see news happen over the weekend, call our round-the-clock news line, 370 0606. That's our news this Friday and this week. Thanks for joining us. We leave you tonight with a special fall foliage scrapbook, a final look at those beautiful fall scenes shot by you, our viewers, and sent to John Sesserich to use in his weather report. We thank you all. We wish goodbye to the autumn leaves. Have a good weekend. See you on Monday.